dudes, how you doing? So we are back after a three-day class. Um, we're going to be doing an explorer. Where did my headphones go? I always do this. Oh, <laughs> it's right here. I'm going to put that one in the case. Um, so that should be good. Let's get the camera set up. That way we don't waste any time here. Sup, AJ Invasion. How you doing? Boot stream, DW. It was a good class, though. We got another one under the belt. It's, it's a lot. Before the class, I'm like, maybe I could do eight people. After the class, I'm like, no. <laughs> but everybody had a good time, I think. At least that's what they tell me. KP, Naka, Sean, how y'all doing? Another explorer? Mm hmm. Funny. There's all this. I swear, cars come in herds. I got that from an Impala. So we had this. Uh, we would have this trend where we would go without a particular car for a little bit, and then all of a sudden it would be nothing but that car for like the entire day or a couple of days. And and my favorite was when a herd of Impalas would come in because Impalas, the earlier models were like super super easy, right up there with like Malibus and stuff, Fusions, old Fusions, Malibus, Impalas, yes, all day. Best place to get a used three gallon take, trying to make my own. Uh, I'm honestly not sure. I mean, I've heard, you know, just regular places like Amazon um, and like brewery things. The problem is you, it, it's, I mean, you can usually get buy off of something like that. The, it, the kegs are, are typically fine, but you still gotta like, it, it's helpful to upgrade the fittings, because they're not made for like 70 to 100 PSI, they're more like 10 to 20. So the kegs are built to take a lot of pressure, but the, the O-rings and stuff in them aren't. And then you also have to usually add like a valve stem on top of it to make it more convenient, which mine almost broke this morning. Not the valve stem, the air compressor actually. All right, let's get this last thing up here and we'll get started. So yeah, I haven't DIY'd my keg. You can try searching the Facebook group and stuff though. Twenty two K five GT coming up. Thoughts? Uh, I've done quite a few streams with them. The K fives are a little bit. They're they're pretty straightforward. Um, they're just tighter, deeper side seals, and then a little bit of a tighter bottom seal on the front doors. Um, but other than that, they're, they're, and then you got to loosen up the brake light too. I forgot about that. But I have like three or four live streams with those things. All right, let's get started here. We got audio? Cool. I got a five gallon tank, or I, I built a five gallon tank, need three for mobile jobs. Oh, well, then you should probably know. No better than me. <laughs> oh yeah, sun distributing absolutely for a keg, but as far as like a used keg, I'm not sure. All right, which way do we do this? I think this one goes on the tank keg side. And then this one. So things are gonna be a little bit scattered today because I've had three days of of fun chaos <laughs> where I just I put things down and I'm jumping in between students and I may or may not have everything in my tool belt but it was fun all right so first things first let's get this prepped Let's tape some seals, we'll prep the back. 
Good, good, good. These quarter windows are definitely different. Doing ceramic? No, not on not on this one. We're doing carbon. Still an awesome choice though. The, you know what the classes really show me? Is that I can never make enough videos. <laughs> And that, and that a lot of people don't see what I see when I'm tinting. So I'm gonna try and make it a point to illustrate things a little bit better. Even then, it's a lot of little subtle things that are hard to convey even in person, but worked out better that way. All right, let's turn this guy on. Boo -boo. Make sure that is off. Cool. These these door windows are a little bit weird. I swear, like the way that they design their windows now. It's like, it's still struggling to roll the window up. Uh, like it's trying to roll the window up when it's even at the top, it doesn't just stop. It's like just the pressure of it is keeping it to stop. So I bet you if somebody had their hand back on that, it would probably like fry the motor or something. But these quarter windows, these are different. Um, a little bit more straightforward than the video I posted, but it looks like they change up the bottom part of the, of the seal. They make it like a hard rubber seal at the bottom. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why have, some have actual seals at the bottom, regular like felt looking seals. And then some, all of a sudden, next thing you know, they do this where it's like a hard, rubber edge here. So we have like a little bit we can sneak our film into. We have a defined border on the sides. We have a little area we got to trim up here just because they may the, the rubber is not even like sealed properly against this. Just a little bit up here. We got to make this go flush. Manufacturers can be sloppy. Just that little bit. Just that little bit. Come on. Range Rover, ooh. Had my first job that I had to walk away from, Range Rover. Oh, the back window's done, but the front door's kicked my ass. Range Rovers are tricky. Never fun to have to do something like that. Um, the windows can sometimes be really hydrophobic. Um, and the bottom corners towards the mirrors can be super tight. So I've seen like a hacky method to, f to get the seal back, but the seal is actually connected all the way around, all the way around. So like you go to pull the bottom seal out to make some space and it's connected to all the sides in the top and like part of the bottom, like it's kind of crazy. So what some guys have done is they will take their knife and actually cut the seal uh, away from itself. Like they'll basically like separate it <clears throat> so it'll still fit in the bottom nice and snug, but it won't be connected anymore. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I understand doing it.
and you're not really like you're just modifying it a little bit but it's never the same so I don't know but yeah the, the windshields and side doors um, front doors are definitely fairly unique on those What do you never bottom load? Um, in most cases, because I've spent years and years doing it this way, and I'm much more familiar with tucking in the film than removing seals. So it doesn't make sense for me to then start removing the seals in most vehicles, because I can just tint them pretty straightforward anyways. I do on really, really difficult to tuck windows, but it's rare. So if you go back, there was a Lexus ES250 stream. I pulled the bottom seals on that one. I've done it on the first K5 that I did out of suggestions. People were saying there was a module or something and then the next one I didn't pull. And then next thing I know, like, I've just tinted them without pulling the seals, so. You know, I totally get why people do it. It makes the installation part easier, but at the cost of disassembly. So I like to leave everything as factory as I can. That's another reason. But... Like at the class, it was it was interesting because uh, one of the guys, he was a he was a body shop guy. He takes cars apart, he puts them together. He's been doing it for like 15 plus years, and I told him right off the beginning, I'm like, okay, I don't do this in most cases, but since you're more familiar with pulling doors apart, installations might be easier. Like I'll teach you a two-step method, but installations for you you're going to be much more confident in disassembling a door because you do it. So if it makes sense for you, then go ahead and do it. It's just not what I do. What's that expression? You do you. <laughs> all the extra squeegees, everything. Everything's all over the place right now. I've had a lot of hatches with spoilers lately. I think that's been the running trend. Like, there's been so many back windows I've done where they have a hatch and spoiler kind of that butts up against the top here. Extra fun because it's been raining. So this, like, basically pinches up against the top. Let's see how much room we have. Where's the thing? Where's the thing, Ford? Where'd you? There it is. Where'd they hide the button? A lot of space here. Very simple on the inside, so that's good. But on the outside, this just butts up against it. So a little bit more room at the bottom. I gotta decide if I wanna, I'm probably gonna just hand cut it. Just did a 35% windshield, love it. Nice, that's cool. 35 is my favorite. 35 is one of those shades where it blocks out just enough glare, really comfortable to drive with. It's just a little, like, looks really dark, so it draws a lot of attention. Tips for an MK6 Golf. Uh, watch my, I, I think it was an MK8 Golf. <laughs> I only know from the comments. They're like, that's not the hard one. I'm like. Yeah, if I had the harder one, I would have done it. Problem is, I get the new one, so I just don't see them, so I made the best of it. <laughs> Watch that video. 
and apply the exact same things I did in that video to, uh, to the other golf. I do it the exact same way. There's just more to shrink, that's all. Don't take out the paneling. Just personal preference for me. And pull shrink the bottom. It'll look just like that video. But if I get one, yeah, we'll cut. And then we'll do a installation. If I get one, I'll make a video. All right, so we're gonna do 35 on the front, and then we're doing 5% over the factory privacy on the rear. Should probably change out this blade here. Do I have an extra one? Ooh, I do. Okay, let me start a new blade here. Borrowing everybody's knives, misplacing stuff. Let's open up a new one. Tint my forehead. <laughs> what? How much would it cost to ceramic tint Toyota Camry 2013? Everything with the windshield would be 650. Without the windshield, 450. Thank God. Where? Where is he? <laughs> you know, I'm always a little sad after the class. Like, I meant to actually get some more footage, but I didn't. I have some. What the hell? I don't... Forge, why'd you put the Explorer on the Explorer? Why they they did like a two-door version of it too? <laughs> I guess that's better than sound screen. What's the difference between carbon and high performance? So high performance. It's gonna be metalized in most cases. I don't know why they call it high performance instead of metalized, but that's usually what it means. NR is non-reflective, HP is high performance, uh, but NR is usually dyed, HP is high performance, that means metalized, and then hold it in front of a heat lamp and see how it compares. The carbon typically is gonna do better. But it's, it's all different price points of offering the same thing. The main thing that you get with a better film is, well, I mean, if you're starting real cheap, you get stability, but you also get heat rejection. I mean, I kind of just skip out on all like the cheap, cheap stuff. I don't want anything. I don't want to use anything that I'd be worried is going to fail. Fifteen percent on a windshield too dark. I wouldn't do it in fifteen. How do you cut the tent when you hold it from the corner of the window? I'll pinch my finger up here. So if you're talking about the side, kind of like that, and then I'll put a teeny tiny bit of blade out. See that little bit, and then I just angle the blade this way. That was something we went over a lot. 
<laughs> many, many times on that one. So, if you want a tint, you really have to pay attention to every little bit. I'm cutting the top edge, but you also have to focus on how I'm cutting it. Notice that the blade is pointed forward, like the knife is angled forward. Not just the blade is pointed in the direction. Little things like that. That I've noticed is probably a main reason <laughs> for, for the people like to take a class. All those little adjustments and stuff, really, really helpful. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to not put shit like that out there. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's like bars over serving somebody. There's just a point where, you know, you're always gonna be able to find somebody that's gonna do it. But I like to think sensible people, it's just, it's not that it doesn't look cool. It's like we have to be buzzkills though. What's the problem with the sound screen? Oh no, just the lettering, I guess, that looks, <laughs> having the car silhouette looks cooler than having sound screen printed on the windshield, but it's like kind of insignificant. I just noticed it. Unless they do that in another spot. <laughs> I tried to use this hose like five times and it was completely empty because it wasn't hooked up to my tank because I moved my tank around here like a hundred times. Now it's good. I have 55 and it's way too late for me. I'm gonna drop it down to 35. Yeah, that's, I like that choice. And even 35, there's gonna be like, don't get me wrong, there's times that you feel like 35 is light, but that's in like bright daylight. Then it becomes nighttime and it's like just enough. But there's a lot of different people that, that watch these streams and get their cars tinted. So, you know, it's not that like, however you're driving, it's not that like you couldn't see with a darker film on the windshield. As a company, it's just, it's kind of nonsensical for me to do on a lot of cars. It just puts myself at risk and possibly endangers people because they think it's cool. So, sorry, I gotta be a stick in the mud. <laughs> and you decide your prices on cars within the type of tint. Um, I've just kind of been around a lot. So I've, I kind of structured my pricing based on other places that I've tended for and just trying to go, just gone up from there. So it's a healthy thing to do is just kind of call around, see what other people are doing, just so you can get a good gauge on like market value if you wanted to, you know, like, hey, I've got a, this four-door car, all the sides in the back, and then adding like a full windshield, and then, you know, some front doors. It'll give you a good gauge of, of where other people are at. So when you wanna charge $1,000 for a job, you know, somebody's called a couple other places, and then, and then they call you, and they're like, what? <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't. Just a little bit more challenging to build up a build up a base there. All right, what do I need? I need 5%. I'm not the most expensive, I'm not the cheapest. Well, why not? Why not be the most expensive? It's just if your customer base can support it. Usually it's something that's built over time, but 
Your pricing earlier on will set the tone for a lot of your future clients. So just, it's much harder to work up from $150, $200 to three or $400. But if you start a little higher, and that's where you want to be, then you got to get clients that can support it, in a sense and that want to, you know what I mean? Like, you have to, we all install all films. So, everybody expects you to do a good job. So you almost have to prove that you're the guy that can do it. And then bring it. along with a good experience. Um, Hyundai Elantra, 40% all the way around. I actually only have 40% in my carbon film, so all the sides in the rear uh, would be 350. Do you have any experience with flex film? Yeah, not good ones, unfortunately. All right. I'm gonna pull that farther down. A little bit. That is like way far down on the rears. Let's go a little bit farther. So when you're trying to decide how far down to pull your tint, um, look at the inside seal. Look at it as, look at where it is in relation to the outside seal. The farther down you go, like I noticed the difference for some people between like a half inch and like a quarter inch made a huge difference. So if your bottom seal is only a little bit down, go just a little farther underneath it. Don't try and kill yourself in the beginning. Because then you just won't get anything tinted. <laughs> Let's see, I just got my new shop. I raised my prices and it seems I get more serious customers who are willing to pay higher prices and show up uh, when I was giving cheaper quotes. Isn't that crazy how that works? Price. I learned this the hard way too. Price doesn't create, like cheap prices <laughs> create really bad customers. Not all of them, like, and that's what's so, so bad about it, is like, there are good people that aren't gonna hassle you, that just want a nice and expensive job. The problem is there's so many more terrible people in that category that just don't give a shit. So if we're to run any type of a, a business to sustain <laughs> what we wanna do, we have to dig out of it. Because it just doesn't make sense. But in the beginning, you get beat up a lot because you are a new 
place and nobody knows who you are. So you're not just gonna open your door and expect people to get there. Like, hey, my shop looks just as pretty as theirs or, or whatever. Wait, oh shit. Oh shit, I did that thing. That should be good. No, wait, I'm okay. I thought I flipped my pattern upside down. I didn't. I just did it backwards. The nearest tent place only uses a plotter. They don't hand cut at all. So you can do a lot of marketing on precision. Yeah, some people don't. Some people don't. It's not that you can't run a good shop, but those little differences there. It's nice. Can the front windshield be tinted? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, one second. GoPro. Canon. Sorry, I gotta tighten this up. It keeps flopping over. And I keep adjusting it, and then I remember I gotta just tighten this headset up. That might do it. Unless they just made it worse. I think if I pull those back, it'll fix it. God, my mind doesn't work this way. Oh, this one goes this way, that's why. Okay. The top one goes backwards, the side one goes forward. And then that should balance out the headset tightness. There, that's better. That's snug. All right. GoPro. Have you done a 98 Crown Vic before? How hard is it? Well, it's definitely not fun. It's, it's on my list of cars that I like to not do. <laughs> but if you do them, uh, on a Crown Vic, uh, it's around here somewhere, you can pull out the bottom seals on that one, and it'll make it, it'll make it a little bit easier on you. I don't know if you can still see that, but up here is where my edge is. I'm just gonna round this out below that. And then go around all my corners here, all my edges. Gotta wipe that off though. Clay bar on that one. We gotta get just a couple new towels. This wiper likes to hold water, especially on a rainy day. Do you do front windshields a lot? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just look at the channel history. We did, done quite a few windshields. Yeah, there definitely are limits depending on what state you're in. So check with your local state laws and know what they are. Everything, 
All the things. Everything's missing. Good morning. I'm still waking up. It's early. It's past 10, so it's early. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open that up. We're gonna let it sit. We're gonna mask the window, or side windows. Let's grab this guy. <laughs> yes, it's definitely pre-recorded. Do you often take off the third brake light on back windshields? No, not usually. If they get in the way and they're easy to take off, yes. But in most cases, now they're built into the deck lids. So you're gonna wanna just kinda tint past them. What's included on the on the kit for the classes that you offer? But you know what? I think I'm gonna leave this one. I'm just gonna be careful. So this one we gotta be really close. It's got a ceramic border here, but it's pretty tight, so I'm gonna leave it be. I'm gonna mask off the quarter windows. But what's included on the classes? A whole bunch of stuff. The main things are like tint keg. Good sprayer, brass end, fusion handle, hybrid squeegee, tri edges. Everything that you pretty much need, minus a heat gun, and like obviously a lot of extra specialty tools. Stuff to basically do like 99% of the jobs. Heat guns, I noticed, um, they're super personal preference. Some people really like the Wagners, and they liked how light they were, and some people like the heavier porter cables, but it's all personal preference there. Class includes free house, free car, yeah, right? How much overlap would you recommend when dealing with a ceramic border? Uh, in most cases, about an eighth of an inch. You just want to get over enough. Uh, to basically cover all your gaps. And the interior paneling will kind of show you how far that you can go. We popped some breakers. We needed some big extension cords as the last class. We had like five heat guns going at the same time, but the building could take it, so that's cool. <laughs> I'm trying to get my prices right to make money. Oh yeah, we all are. So, Figure out what you want to charge hourly, and then see how long it takes you to tin a car. Most people are in line with like anywhere from 80 to like $150, really. But that being said, people are all over the place.
What's the best way to snap shrink? Every time I do it, it curls like crazy. You're putting too much heat on it. Just back off on the heat. So this was definitely even a hard thing to teach in class, um, especially on the, <laughs> on the flatter window. So I'm just trying to get the film to curl um, and then lay flush when I squeeze it all down. So you turn on the heat gun, hold it farther away from the window, and then when you get closer, it'll start to heat up. When you get about maybe this far away, that's probably enough. It's probably like eight inches away. It'll start to curl on you. And then you can watch it just slowly start to curl. And then after it curls a little bit, you just let go. And then you can pull down from this side. And you'll see these little, little like tension lines. All you're trying to do is create some soft tension lines. And then when you pick the film back up, this is usually a good picture of what it looks like when it shrunk. And then it lays back down. So if it's super curly on you, you're doing it way too much. It's a subtle thing in most cases. The more curved the glass is, the more you have to shrink it. But most, most door windows, you don't have to shrink very much. So that's why this is just a simple, quick, inefficient way to do it when you get the hang of doing it. I think it was going to record one of the installations. So let me set this up really quick. This will be quick. I've posted some videos lately. Thank you for watching and commenting on them. Um, they've been doing actually pretty well. They're super easy for me to make too. Because voiceovers. <laughs> All right, let's get this set up. So I'm going to be me doing this. One more time. Mm -hmm. and Okay, there we go. So we'll get the, uh, pop the camera over there, we'll get the installation of both sides, <clears throat> and then I'll make it into a door video. I noticed those are very lacking on my channel, so. Let's get this set up. Two seconds here, don't knock over my coffee. I had an idea to put an infrared camera on window shrinking to see how it is. That would be cool. I'd get one of those. They're a little pricey. Where's my, really? Really? I thought they were over here. Maybe they're over on the other side. Oh, they are, okay. So these are some really simple things. It doesn't look like it's convenient right now. 
There we go. So this is a quick disconnect plate on my camera, and I had to buy a metal cage simply so I could get to the battery door uh, without having to take this off every time. Anything that I can do to make this more efficient um, has helped out a ton. Oh my God, can't even tell you, watch. Just <laughs> Easy peasy. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna record, I think, the outside of this one, and then we're gonna do the... We're gonna record the outside of this one, and then we're gonna record the inside of the other one. It's the old YouTube trick I used to do. Make life easy. Something like that. Got it. Ba, ba bam. Carbon Plus. I've used it, yeah. I really liked it. It's got a great color, shrinks fine. Um, oh yeah, the only issue I had with some sticking issues on the inside that I need to put a couple more pieces on to double check. But the heat rejection is really good too. Slightly unsure if it's as good as Pro Nano though. The numbers are really look really good, but when I tried it, I'm like, I swear there's a little bit more heat coming through. So some things I definitely noticed, people were not. <laughs> so try it just too. You've got this side and this side, and then you got this third side here that's kind of weirdly shaped. Only use these two sides. Never use, never use this back side here. I actually noticed a lot of people doing that. that all down. All right. Put it up there. Attack it. Let's get out of the camera way. So we're gonna pull it. So you wanna pull the liner so it's halfway in between. You can go a little lower than halfway on the back side, on the long side. You just wanna make sure there's a good amount of space in between wherever you're peeling and then that liner is then flat across. So then when you go to pick it up, I just grab the tint here and I, right where that liner uh, gets folded in half, then we just pick it up off the glass. And so it's nice and supported. And then we go from here, whoosh, both hands. Roll it up on the glass here. I'm just worried about this front edge. So one big thing that I'm gonna focus on is this little, that little side edge right there. See that? And then same thing with this side too. It's flat. Always make sure the film is flat when you tuck it into the side seals. It's the only way you're gonna be able to do it without it crunching. <laughs> Biting the tent to separate it from the liners industry standard. <laughs> 
Some people are good at flicking the corner with their finger. I've been hit or miss. Sometimes I can get it, sometimes I can't. That way's been more consistent for me, but some people do it completely opposite. Look at that. You see how freaking close that is? Was it squeegee? So this is a hybrid. Ah, oh, I love hearing students say this too. There's so many that hadn't used this squeegee blade. There are so many that just hadn't used some particular things and I would hear over and over again. They're like, yeah, I've been using like that blue one over there, like the Blue Max. But I like this one better. I'm like, see, I know. All those little things, especially in the beginning, add up to being significant. They're not going to make or break your job, but they can definitely help you out. All right, we're going to let this dry a little bit more before we roll it up, especially because it presses pretty hard against that top edge there. See, I don't even, like, people say bite it. I'm not really biting it. I'm lightly shifting the end of it. But it takes, like all these steps, it takes time and practice. So just grab a piece of film, cut it into a lot of little sections, and then munch on it for lunch. Good. actually doing that right now. <laughs> okay. So you can use a, a steamer to remove tint. I prefer to do it that way. Or you should, you should use a steamer. Um, so it, like, especially for the back windows where it's going to be really helpful. The doors you can peel and scrape. Mm -hmm. Let me change this guy out. Feels a little rough. So tint removal is just not, not an easy thing either. It can be, but it depends on the film that's on it, and you don't know until you start. But look at it this way. A shop would charge you quite a lot to do a tint removal. You can go buy a $50 steamer, some awesome, and scrub pads for a lot cheaper. And then you can actually just remove it all yourself. It's just going to take a lot of labor to do it. So even if you're spending money, you're still saving money on it. You just got to spend some money. 
and then return it afterwards. <laughs> I got a removal coming in on Saturday. I'm not stoked about it. All the sides in the rear, 250. That's for the removal. Um, but it is kind of bubbly, I've been told, so <laughs> yay. All right, so we'll continue along the rest of it. This is good for now. Thank you, camera. You're a champ. How often do you change their tool, your tools? When they feel like they're worn out. So I swapped that tri-edge because there was a section on it that felt a little bumped. So I got rid of it. So, oh my God. Hang on one second. I didn't even notice. Hang on, Canon. Canon. One sec. Pro. One of the uh, one of the students just swung by because um, he left his jacket here, and I guess keys to his car was in there too. <laughs> but he was waiting up front for a little while. I didn't even notice. I'm mesmerized by the taillight movement. You mean like just people getting more taillights now? I don't, I get questions here and there about it. I just don't do it. Uh, I just got your text reply. I heard back from the wife. If your calendar allows, we'll. Oh, yeah, let me check it. So I, I had the quote all filled out to send, and then I remember getting distracted again, like somebody came in, and then I never even sent the proposal. But let me check. Should be fine. No worries, you're busy right now. Check it later. <laughs> Thank you. It's always that, like, when you start splitting your focus between a hundred little things, like, so many little things get dropped. At this point, like, there's days where I'm like, yeah, there was no, there was no problem. Everything went fine. And then there's, there's like a handful of days now that it was like, ah. That means I need to get some help.
what do you use to hold the carpet shield? The lowest tape, actually. So carpet shield is a, a sticky plastic. There are other sticky plastic carpet protectors. So they're all gonna be a little different. And there was one that I used that I can't remember the name that I swear was a little bit better. Again, I didn't remember the name. But with all adhesives, I've noticed it's hit or miss on door panels. Door panels are made so things don't stick to them. Because long-term use, if things stuck to them very easily, you have really dirty door panels and car manufacturers want them to be nice for a long time. So most things won't stick to them. House wrap tape has a pretty aggressive acrylic adhesive and it pulls clean. So it's been a real easy way to just, I put a strip down and then I layer plastic over it and the carpet shield kind of grabs along that and creates a little bit of a seal right along this top. It's been, it's a little bit wasteful, but it's really efficient. You know that like 3M painters drop plastic that comes in a roll? If you could have that with a tape that wasn't painters tape, that would be a better solution, I think. Or a physical like shower curtain type cover that you can put over it. Um, it's just always been kind of annoying to try and tape the top edge of something that is, you place it and then you tape over it. It's always been a little bit annoying for me to try and do that. So the quicker way has been this. So I just thought this was kind of a, a funny solution because for me it works well enough, but I think there's probably, there's gotta be a better solution out there. But everybody, <laughs> so many people just see that and they're like, yeah, I'll do that. So then this solution get, got way more popular than I thought it was gonna be. We're too busy tinning the cars to try and figure something else out. And then afterwards, this tape will then peel off. I noticed a huge difference for people using tape though. Absolutely. Somebody brought in a escape their own escape for front doors and those have really bad felt side seals and one side was taped one side was not the side that was taped was infinitely more cleaner on the sides five percent on the windshield is poggers that's why we don't do it <laughs> For, oh, for a roll holder, I couldn't hardly find any good options. So what's nice about this is it's actually part of like a, part of like a garage closet system. So there's these dual track brackets here and then these just slide in here. These are just short brackets. So a lot of these are kind of universal one to another so you just find rails, you find short brackets, and then I found these longer brackets at the container store, and they have these little hooks on the bottom, which just happens to kind of fit this whole thing and bring the roll out just far enough past the boxes to where it doesn't take up any extra space. It's been really convenient. Oh yeah, I need a, 
I like it a lot. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this one out. So this one is very different from the last one that we did. This one we just have to be a little bit more exact about our cuts and it everything should fall into place. I'm not liking that though. Let me make that straight. There we go. This one's down. Take this up. something else. There we go. Should be good. Cut one side. Uh, flat glass classes? I don't know, actually. Automotive is kind of even underserved, it seems like. So sorry, man. Unfortunately, no, I don't. Flat glass, I think, is easier to train for, too. So it might be easier to actually find a company willing to hire and teach you. There's usually bigger, I've noticed, just talking to people, I've noticed there's bigger flat glass crews than there are automotive crews. Automotive is like, automotive is like the first thing most people jump into. Expel has a flat glass course, but it's probably for like Expel dealers, so. I mean, it's worth looking into though but usually their programs are only for their dealers, so. Patrick will do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, if he's set up for it, sure. That's worth working into.
Do you still have glass companies referring? No. No, they really never did much. <laughs> They did like, they did a handful of times, and then it was mostly for stuff that they want, like, and this will still happen. It's, it's for jobs that they don't want to take on themselves, but they have a good client relationship with, they'll refer them over my way. So we did like an Audi, Audi like A7 or something, and he's like, my guy, you can't do that car. <laughs> but I know you can, so. I'm like, I hate you. Ugh. Why do this? I gotta, I think I gotta recut this. Maybe I can shift it over, we'll see. This one's tough in a different way. So we'll see if we can tuck this all in. My top corner and my bottom corner. Ah, oh, so close. Yep, it's just a little wide, I think. Mm, it was close. We just crunched it a little bit. So we'll see how this top is gonna lay in here too before we rip this off, but we gotta recut this. Oh, explore quarters. Why you gotta be annoying? Yeah, okay. Business phone numbers, look up uh, VOIP. Voice over IP. Yeah, we gotta cut off. Huh. Do we not have a short roll of carbon? So that kind of changes up what's gonna be available for the back window. Let me get another piece here before you get too far into it. So VOIPs are, are super handy for your business. Um, they have, you can get physical phones along with internet phone lines. So they'll, uh, they'll go right to your phone. You should make a video on the tools that you keep in your pouch. I actually have an older one, but yeah, I guess I need an updated one. Basically everything that's provided in the class. <laughs> but there's definitely some, some small, like there's some really some changes, but they're very small changes. Like they're the same basic types of things. So like triages are still in my belt. I just have Detroit 10 Studio ones now. So keep some extra different things. Let's see. I love my Avery pouch. Isn't it the best? The Avery pouch is awesome. Let the phony, the workhorse splatter. Maybe. It's probably a smart thing at this point, but. I'm gonna try one more time. I was seeing if I had any extra film off of that that could be used for the quarter window, but kind of, not really. So let me do that. Chop off another piece.
Yeah, this... <laughs> One thing about explorers, they like to make very unforgiving quarter windows, but they went okay on the, on the side that was difficult last time. And now uh, they went difficult on the easier side. Go figure. We were close. We were really close. We'll get it. Let's make a couple small adjustments on it. Mostly the width and the way that this cuts straight down. See right there, I think it trailed away from me. So we'll approach it from the opposite direction. That should help. Cool. And we got that light. This happens too much. Knock those off. Street, 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 street. So we hope, we hope this is it. Looks pretty good. But that's the difference. The difference is very, very small. I just need a smidge wide enough to fit into everything. But I got more room on this side. I can see an edge. But on the rubber edge, that's where everything's got to be kind of like damn near perfect. Get out of here, liner. What are you doing? Why are you making it difficult? Thank you. So if we do it right, when you get it perfect, you don't fight with it. But the trick is getting it perfect. There we go, that's it. You see that? Now there's no bunch up on the sides. All my gaps are covered and that corner is not even bumped up. So now, I'm a little nervous I'm gonna mess it up at this point because last time Got a little carried away with the squeegee too, where it shifted while I was squeegeeing it. This is five. <laughs> this the, so the fronts are thirty-five, and the rear is five over the privacy, so it's real dark. Ooh, I like it. Boom. 
That is perfect. I didn't know if we'd get there, but we got there. So similar story with the last one, with how perfect your cuts have to be on this. But you take your blade, loosen up the side edges just a little bit. You're not even like, you're not cutting anything. All you do is, all you do is kind of like, you're washing out any dirt, you're freeing up that side seal a little bit because they're, they're rubber. So when you kind of pull them back, and then when they sit for a while, they'll tighten back up again. Now we just gotta do it again. But that went well. Put this down. So in a lot of cases, you what's what sucks is the door windows become easier than the quarter windows, or the roll downs, they become easier than the quarter windows. This is another one of those things where door window all day long, quarter window, <sighs> breathe. But we can do them. It's very dark though. <laughs> In here I can hardly see through it. <laughs> Everybody asks how I can see. I say I can see. I got used to it. <laughs> you guys. 5% gang. 5% darker. Is that the new 2%? No, this is 5. It's just over the uh, privacy glass. Not using a clay bar. I gotta go grab one. What's wrong with the red gator blade? So we're gonna tuck this in. <laughs> yes. This is like, there we go. I was gonna say, this is like one of the dumbest things about tint, I swear. Where you tuck it into one side seal, and then it, like the whole thing starts to shift, except like one little spot, causing the whole thing to not move anymore. And you're like, what happened? Why? It's always just one little spot.
What's the most, what's the most satisfying step? Being done. <laughs> I mean, you work up some type of a confidence with all of this to where, like, yeah, that's not going to take me long to do. I know what I'm doing. But what really stresses you out is, like, on the windows, like a windshield or whatever, where there's a, a lot of work leading up to it, and you do the best you can, and then you still fail at doing it. So every time I do a windshield, I cross my fingers that it turns out nice. And then when I'm done, I'm like, huh. Cool. All right, let's see this rear quarter before we go to the front door. Grab that. We saw a couple of your students at Sun Distributing during Rick's Live. That's cool. Yeah, I tell all of them. If you can make the make the time, cat out there. It's a really, really cool place to visit. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. There really aren't hardly any tint stores that you can just walk into. They just don't exist. All right, I'm gonna continue. We're gonna change this up. There we go. Nice. That should do it. Boop. Do you put no roll-up stickers on the doors? Oh. Um, I'll put tape over the switches if something happens. So here's the thing. In most cases, you can actually roll down the tent same day, and you'll be totally fine. It's just everything's going to be a little wet. It's always helpful to let the film dry, but just because you roll it down doesn't mean it's going to peel. If it's all sealed up at the bottom, you should be able to roll it down right away. So... Something that ends up peeling might be something that would have peeled anyways. But it's no fun when it happens. I used to be a stickler about it. Sometimes bubbles will show up in the middle from rolling it down early. Yeah, that's one of those, like, it just needs to be sealed down, right? Express roll down is an interesting option too. Protection plans, express roll downs, any of those things. They're definitely interesting options. You can do them.
Matt's the spoiler guy. <laughs> yeah, we've done a few. I'd love to do more explorers. I just don't get asked about them. It's one of those super popular vehicles that I've hardly done front doors even for. So many more F-150s, escapes, everything else. It's not a lot of explorers. I don't really know why, but this is our second one lately. I know I've got a third one that's gonna get lined up soon. And then uh, after that, who knows? Yep, very easy. Just the rear quarters. <laughs> it's the only thing you're gonna be spending a lot of time on. There we go, that lined up really nice. Just make sure this side is perfectly straight. And then round your corner a little bit extra and make sure that also is perfectly straight. And then your tent can still slide up kind of into this top part and the sides and not leave any gaps. So they're tedious. Difficult if you want to move fast. You gotta just kind of, you gotta slow down like a little bit. car to play with the lights now. <laughs> Cannon. Ugh. One sec. What? How do we get rid of this? There we go. Any tips on mini, mini quarters, like from a Renault Clio? I haven't done a Renault. Um, unfortunately, a lot of really, really small quarters are just difficult. There's, there can be paneling in the way. It just depends on how they decide to do the gaskets. So if it's a nice ceramic border like they have on this window, then you know, it's just trying to fit a teeny tiny window in there and use a small squeegee blade to squeegee it out. But if they're small with a rubber gasket, you're just gonna be extra tough. Um, yeah, yellow turbos, those work. The fusion turbos are great. Um, you can also take one of your old handled squeegee blades and you can cut it down and just make really small squeegees out of this so you can reuse these a lot. Very helpful to do that. 
One of my favorite little squeegee windows was an uh, orange crush. I just hacked it down. Are you shorting Netflix? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't short anything that already fell that much. If anything, you buy the panic and wait for it to bounce back up. But I don't really I don't really like to play guessing games with that, so So, if we get a little sticker here, we'll take that off. I'm gonna move the camera over here too, um, and then film the inside of this window. Hopefully that won't be annoying, right? Do you do deposits? Yeah, and I've noticed that the deposit conversation really started after I started doing them. <laughs> so many more shops seem to be doing deposits now. It's fighting back on no-shows. Okay, let's do this. And we can face this this way. Yeah, it really sucks. Um, when you're new, especially, you're going to notice that you're going to notice a lot of people are just calling you for a quote. How much do you ask for? Um, anything that you want. I've heard half down. I asked for 40. It's kind of just an arbitrary number. But it's it's just to make a commitment. That's, that's the thing. If somebody's willing to put any amount of money down, they're committed to coming to your shop. I don't think I started this. What the heck? OK. Um, they're committed to coming to your shop. Um, I can go over the deposit thing in a little bit. Let me do this window first. Yeah, it's a it's definitely a confusing thing. Especially when your shop is newer, lots of people looking around for convenience and price. And the largely the only reason that you're getting a phone call anyways is because they're still shopping around for convenience and price and you exist. But there's no loyalty there. <laughs> Some people get offended when you ask for a deposit, then they don't want to come to you. And your pricing's too cheap. I've had pushback one time on a deposit. He didn't book with me. My business goes on.
All right, this is going to be challenging with this in here. So, they think you're going to scam them for the money. Hmm. And that's fine. They can think that. Just. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go on the inside here. And we're gonna roll this up. Just slide this in. Is this for TikTok? No, this is for YouTube actually. I care about you guys too. You know that? Tell ya, that is not the best place to put the arm. I bumped it too much, I think. But these ones are really easy to tuck, so. A hundred subscribers? You don't get anything. <laughs> you don't get anything till a hundred thousand. That's your. It's your little YouTube recognition. You got work for it. <laughs> it was like a hundred. <laughs> you guys are funny. No, you don't get you don't get shit for it. Like I said, your only recognition is a hundred thousand from YouTube. Wow, I walked all the way around my heat guns on this side. What a trip. So, unfortunately, to burst everybody's bubble here, followers and subscribers largely mean nothing. All it means is you will get shown to slightly more people when you first release a video. That's all it means. But every video, every video is uh, is a struggle.
pull this out. So my, uh, my TikTok is actually an amazing example of how little followers actually mean. What, what people really want to see is good videos. So if it's a good video, it'll get shown. If it's a bad video, um, there is a chance that you marketed the video wrong. So if you title something Ford Explorer quarter window, it's not very appealing. If you title something, don't hack up this quarter, it could be a major problem. <laughs> More people will click on it. So you got to figure out what's a good balance between those two things. And some things are just destined to never get many views, but you always got to keep working at it. I actually learned, learned quite a lot more just playing around with TikTok. The TikTok almost has 10,000, but my last video, <laughs> oh yeah, we did this window. My last video did uh, damn near 8 million views. But every video has to be punchy and good or they won't get views. The only difference is if I consistently post good TikTok videos, then TikTok will be like, oh, people really like them. So when you post a video, we're just naturally going to show it to more people. So a good video on a bad channel still has a chance to succeed. It'll just take longer to get there. But you got to be very self-aware with all of this. People don't care about you. People don't care about, they just want to see the thing in most cases, especially educational stuff. They just want to see you do the thing. Shut up, do the thing. OK, learn the thing, moving on. to this other one. Uh, for ceramic, we we use Geo's Pro Nano, Geo Shield Pro Nano. How was the class? The class was good.
A little different from the last one. Just like focus. Some people focused that like m a lot more people focused on just shrinking on like the second and third day. Um, for this one, it was kind of split between doors and shrinking, but we did a lot more uh, windshield installations too. My uh, my Ultima. <laughs> it's like a picture. It's really funny. There's like water covering half of the VIN number. We used a lot of water on it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you should make a knife with the built-in light. Well, you can do it. Sounds like a lot of work. You can pitch it on Shark Tank too. You can be like, sharks, I have this knife with built-in light. Just get that little bit. I want to make sure that's trimmed off before. We, oh my god, that's what I was worried about. Ah, oh, damn it! You see that? I don't know if you can see it. There's a little tear right there. It goes into my film. So we gotta shift this whole thing off a little bit. See this guy right here? <laughs> it popped into my head. I was like. Please don't tear into my film. That's why I'm trying to be so careful with it. And then it literally tore right back into my film, which means that there would be a gap there. So we gotta recut it. So same thing. Put a little incision there, pull it back. And then we gotta cut a little relief spot here. And we're just going right in between. It does get in the way, but we've done a lot of them lately. A lot of similar ones. Just be careful. That's all. Don't do the same thing again, please. There we go. See how that came away nice and smooth this time? So all our, our gaps should be covered. I'm gonna cut this a little bit lower too. There's room on the inside. This would work. Not on this one. All right. Oh, explore, close, or rear window. Why you be this way? So anybody that attended the class, this is just like the blazer back window. brand of dryer sheets? Uh, actually, no. Use the better ones. Use, just go get like snuggle dryer sheets. Cheap ones actually suck. Like, no joke, they're really bad. Same thing going on here. 
Really? I hope that can be fall down. No. All right, we're good. Looks like we're good. Cannon. Good. Bounce are also good. But in a world of lots of choices, use one of those. If you want similar results to me, <laughs> you just use the Snuggles one. I used to use Bounce. And I don't know. I can't tell much of a difference, honestly, between the two. It's just it's almost like a mental thing. But I can tell you I've used some really bad ones, like generic Meyer ones, Costco ones were really sticky. Um, so a lot of people use Bounce. Snuggles is another one that works really well, too. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Like, why is it better? When you shrink, you kind of know why. But when you're new, you gotta just trust that it's a better option. And then later on when you learn, go ahead and try them out, and then you can re you'll really understand at that point. Because, so this was a, actually, I have some footage too. So one of the students actually brought, um, he took y'all's recommendation, <laughs> or at least people in the group. A lot of people talked up Lexan. And so he bought their carbon, spent $1,500 on their carbon. And uh, so we had some direct comparisons between the two. And I can honestly tell you, it is f easier understand the concepts of shrinking with using an easier shrinking film than Lexan. He was able to eventually shrink it, but we started out with Pro Classic and then he'd move over and it's slower, it shrinks differently, but it was so cool to see a direct comparison and somebody practicing on both of them. but I can shrink it and I can make it look fairly straightforward. It's not that it's like a bad, bad shrinking film. You just don't learn the right things from it. go. Now, we cross our fingers that this is the right size. Should be. 
How many Apex have you done so far? I haven't. It's not my favorite. I like to test all my stuff before I do it. And if I don't, it's not that it's a bad film, but I need other stuff to compare it to first. Especially when your pricing is like way up there. At least that's what I feel like. We got a towel. We're just gonna have to. Oh, where did everything go? Big towel, big towel. Students put things away, and I was really happy about it. Thank you very much. I don't know where anything is. <laughs> I had like towels and stuff hanging up. So I'm just gonna have to use this. And then I left extra ones at home. So I'm gonna have to use these. stuff up. What film brand do you recommend if you are new? Um, to save a little extra money, Tint Depot has a pretty good five-year film. It's a one and a half mil film. It's gonna be very similar to using a more premium film. Something that'll, that'll carry like the same thickness, but still stays in like a budget category. So dyed films are your best option. Cheap carbon films are just gonna inherently be a lot more difficult to shrink when you're new. So I know it sounds cool to get, but you'll have, you'll get a roll of film and you throw it all in the garbage and wonder what the hell you did wrong. Cause that shit does not look the same as what you see on here. tips to not crease film uh you're bunching it together it's honestly it's 
watch the videos and just try and copy exactly what's going on in the videos. It's there's pull shrinking, there's some finessing. Um, it's like no joke, really difficult to say exactly what's what the issue is. Oh, I almost sprayed myself. Um, because, because I'd watch people uh, shrink windows here at the class, and most of them are all doing something a little different. Watch the videos, mirror the videos as much as possible. So in the top corners, the film will bunch up a lot. So it's best to like pull the film a little straight forward and flatten it out and put some light heat or put some heat on a broader section because what you're doing is just crunching film together. I saw it happen a lot. Also make sure your sides are tacked down. Yay, back window. <laughs> the tint juice is the tinter. No, not really. I think the budget. <laughs> I think the budget chooses the tinter. So this one was tilted. There we go. That still works. Whenever I tilt the film, I'm always like, trying to figure out exactly how I tilted it because I could be shrinking in the wrong direction and in that case I gotta cut it back out well, that was a big one this is your solution to getting rid of the fingers. You gotta shrink the film. So just putting some heat on it is not enough to shrink it. You gotta like intentionally make sure that film is flat. And if it is, you're not gonna have any fingers. Fingers are just telling you that the, the film is not fitting the glass quite right. So your solution is gonna be then shrink it more especially in those areas. We got these quarter windows, little touch up, and we'll be good. Yay. That's fun.
But yeah, glass is always curved to some degree. And if there's enough space to kind of lay everything flat, then you can do that. But with seals, they hold water. They'll not let everything lock up very easily. So then they will, you'll pop up little fingers and stuff. So see these little guys here? These are fingers. Probably would lay down fine on the inside. But I'm gonna curl the top just a little bit. Boom, they're gone. I'm gonna curl the bottom just a little bit. Boom, they're gone. Now I can install it without worrying that things are gonna pop up. Now on the other side, a couple things little popped up because I shrank it in the wrong direction because they tilted the whole piece. But I didn't get out of control with it, so it's okay. One more time. What's up, dude? How you doing? I'm good. Starter kits, Sun Distributing and Tint Depot. They both have starter kits um, that you can kind of go through and pick everything out. Um, if you order basically all the tools off of my site, you will get most of that. Oh, shit. See that? See that little gap right there? See how much this paneling covers things up? Ugh. So you gotta always check, always check all your edges. It's easy to miss something like that. But we can loosen this up, slide it back over, cover that gap. It was just slid Ugh. or wasn't quite in the right spot. But I didn't notice till I stuck my head all the way in here. Don't be lazy. Good. Good. We got a couple little fingers right there. We're gonna take care of that with a heat gun. And then 
clean things up. And be good. I tried tinting yesterday with Gila and failed miserably. <laughs> that sucks. So, all those like, a lot of those DIY auto solutions, there's like, there's enough there. Like they gotta keep their price points down. So there's enough there to do a basic job, but it's not straightforward. So chances are you're gonna have to do it a handful of times to get a, a decent result. That's how they make their money. User errors. Probably have to treat them. No, I don't think so. One at five on the back, went 35 on the front doors. So in Michigan, you're allowed to go as dark as you want on the back. Run that up. See, it's a lot faster to do touch ups on the outside um, and prevent them from becoming an issue on the inside. So I just spent, I don't know, a couple minutes trying to touch up that one little area there. Looks good. But that's time. Where I just had the film oriented weird on the outside. So if I had shrunk it, <laughs> if I had shrunk it right, it wouldn't have been a problem. It just became one. Yes, but make sure it's ammonia free. At least when you go to the inside of the windows. I actually got it to try and make film fade and I haven't put much effort into doing it, but it hasn't worked yet. It's that trope that I've heard forever and I have seen it happen. I was just looking for a glass cleaner right on hand and there it is, this one. Canon. There we go. I need like a hot key for that. That says like unfreeze. I think that would be okay. Then the screen would be fixed a lot faster. Look at that. That would actually be a pretty easy thing to set up. I just don't know how consistently it would work. I think it should be okay though. You just gotta do it. He unfreeze it. Oh, no, it wasn't intended.
Hmm. Can't see it. Would you rather have a? Would you rather? Uh, would you ever have an employee? Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna need one here soon enough. I'm just trying to see if I could catch something. Where is it? It's right here. Can't see it. We're going to have to do this differently. Oh, well, maybe in another video. Steel wool? What are you using steel wool for? You never like steel wool. You use too many bits. Oh, for cleaning the rear windshield? Yeah, especially in the rear windshield. Anytime I used steel wool on a back window, I'd get a little piece of steel wool in my film. Drove me nuts. Hated using that stuff. How do you get rid of peanuts? Um, so, more often than not, is it a Challenger, Charger, 300, or Mustang? What are peanuts on the Froster Lines? A dumb name. <laughs> like, no joke. It's a BMW? Okay. It's a little more rare on a BMW. Um, so if they're already there, you can actually heat up the spots, splice a little hole, along the defroster line and press all the air out from the top, from the bottom. All that air is gonna get trapped somewhere, so you need it, you need to release it along the defroster line. So you heat up the outside, create a little hole in the tent, or a little splice there, and then you can press everything out and it should be okay. That's one of the few things that you can usually fix okay. To prevent them from happening, I'll turn on the defroster lines before I go to install the film. Um, but that's usually on those cars that I mentioned. Occasionally I'll see it on a more unique car, but it's not as often. If I do, they're, they take a little time to touch up, but they can be touched up. Um, but if they kind of pop up well after the vehicle's been delivered, you can have the, the client come back and, and fix something like that. Um, I use my knife, so I'll make a little like incision right on the defroster line. You're not cutting through the defroster line vertically, you're cutting along it horizontally, just like right in the center. It's how people used to like actually do back windows. They used to seam them on the inside of the defroster lines. So I know it's hard to see, but you literally cut it wherever that air pocket is, Cut it right along the defroster a little bit. You're not damaging defrosters. And then the air will have a place to go because the window is pretty much all sealed up. Doesn't mean it's a guaranteed fix, but it's one of the things that can usually be fixed. Especially if it hasn't been gone for too long. Just checking the inside here. I almost lost my turbo. Oh, this looking good. Hmm. 
me get my uh, heat gun here. What did you do with your old Explorer? I sold it. Oh, son of a bitch. Is that what that is? Oh, you can't even tell. Not unless you're here. Oh, shit. All right, well, this sucks. My bad. I thought it was all done. That paneling is actually just a little bit different. I thought I was done. That paneling's a little bit different. It's a little more pronounced on the inside. So, right here, it's dipped in just a little bit, causing a gap. And you can't, just like the car, you can't see it very easily until probably the hatch is completely closed and you're sitting in the driver's seat looking through it. Ugh. So, you're kind of looking straight through. I don't even know if you'd be able to see it or not. Um, but I'm not happy with it. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, we gotta redo it. Plotter time. Ugh. I got the pattern there, though. It's easy to remove the rear spoiler. <laughs> I hear ya. I just don't want to do it. No, I just need something that's going to work. Take it apart. There's always the champions that always say they take it apart. There we go. This long. Yep. All right. Now I'm just going to oversize it. Right? That's how you fix that. Whole thing. It's a little bigger. I did say I was going to oversize the bottom, and I think I forgot while I was cutting it. So that didn't really fix my problem. So especially along this top edge here, most of it was fine. Unfortunately, one little part was not. Oh, shit. There we go. Sides was good. Hard to see. All right, so there's my plotted pattern. I just sent the windshield if they're stickers. Uh, depends on the stickers. In most cases, you can you can just card over them, but they are gonna make your shrink a little funny. So if you just haven't been shrinking much, try going right over them. If that sucks, then uh, have them remove their stickers.
Can we duplicate you? No. But companies try. Ugh. Go like a cannon. Cannon. Remove the stickers. I'm talking about registration stickers. Oh, we don't have those there. Uh, check with local tenors. See what other people are doing. I don't have to deal with those. Are you serious? I think it was just connecting as I disconnected it. Obnoxious. Yeah, so it depends on the state. Some are some are paper and they'll just disintegrate and then they have to go get new ones. So if they'll hold together, you can cut them off and then try and reapply them. If not, I've seen really big ugly cutouts around them and that's just the way it is. But that's not something I ever have to deal with. So I don't have that great of an answer. There we go. All right. So this one is pretty flat. Normally, like we did earlier, we wet shrunk it. This one, or we dry shrunk it, obviously. Obviously. Um, this one, we're gonna just wet shrink to speed things along here. Do the old little loop around the wiper. Free up some space. Shrink out the fingers. I kind of snap shrink the bottom. There's hardly anything to shrink on this though. So it doesn't need much. And then, which is good, because then we can uh, have a very quick chance at throwing this back in there without wasting lots of time. Because that's no fun. Nobody likes to waste lots of time, especially when they try to do it right the first time. They hit it. Oh, it's over there. Oh, they got the little arrow. Twenty percent on the windshield. Yeah, I'd recommend thirty-five over twenty. I did mess it up. It was cut a little short, and it's <laughs> it was really hard to tell. So all this is so dark up here. And it, I can see where the plastic basically seems against the glass, but if you get right underneath here, it's actually not the plastic line on the outside. It, it's just you can see barely through it. So big bummer there. We had it all tacked in place. Everything was good, but we failed. So. I'm gonna make sure that it didn't leave any glue behind because that would be the next sad thing. But we really super cleaned the window, so now it's like extra clean. It is sad. Some guys would take a tint marker, cover that little area up, <laughs> and call it a day. It's just, no. We'll get it right.
But, you know, even without a plotter, save the pattern. You can adjust your mistakes, cut the whole thing out much quicker. And, and recovery, like back to where you were, is fast or can be instead of like, you know, on a regular back window. It's a little bit harder to do something like that. So we got lucky on this one. Yeah, now it's oversized. We'll trim it off. See all this? This is overlapping the paneling now. You gotta be kidding me. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Sorry. They got me again. <laughs> I think Ellen's like. See that? Yep. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, so frustrating. The light gaps will hide under the last area that you checked. Even, I swear, you're thorough, you get going, and then I swear I checked there, and then I checked there again after it's all tacked in place. And there's a gap. There we go. God damn. It's easy. That's what he said. Is out of 20. Oh, well, you got to make sure you're on top of your ordering. Never wait until the last day to order film. You need a couple days. Sometimes it can get to you quick, but it depends on where it's coming from. Always got to stay on top of your ordering. That's like one of the biggest problems. Know how far your distributor is away from you, how many days shipping typically takes, and always account for a day or two extra in case of hiccups. So have a revolving inventory. But that sucks. At least you had some 20. See that? No gap now. <laughs> really good. I've done that before though. I'm speaking from experience about ordering. Especially a shot. You have like a shade and you think you're okay. Like it's happened here too. Where I have a shade. I don't install it that much, and then all of a sudden, like three customers will come in and, and use like the rest of my inventory. Those fingers were what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It wasn't shrunk enough. So I snap shrunk the bottom, and it was all oversized. So there, it's just needed to be shrunk a little bit more 
but you notice I just shrunk on the bottom. I didn't shrink the top. I should have curved it a little bit more to help prevent that, but on something like a hatch, it's no big deal because it's easily accessible. On the bottom of a back window, yeah, it's a pain. But you're doing the right thing by, if you, if you live in an area where there's heat, there's not as much heat here. Sometimes there's just snow outside. <laughs> but it's just gotta be shrunk a little bit more. No, even for me. So all those edges stay wet. So you warm them up, you press them down, um, but there's always water on those edges. So you really gotta just take some time, dry them out, or let them dry naturally. So what you did is good. But it all happened on the top. Well, the bottom, when we put it down, you'll see it's the top. Didn't feel like trying to shrink against the spoiler. Something small I can touch up on the inside for this one. But it's an educated change. They have two day delivery. I picked that, but then it took two day. Oh. Order times matter too, so yeah, it's tough to say. You know, I was really annoyed about that with some companies too. You know, there's a lot of like, they'll still sell you fast shipping like FedEx and, and UPS, they will, but they won't necessarily deliver on it and they got your money, so then you gotta call and try and, because they're going through lots of logistical challenges and express everything is just not, not as common anymore. Not for now. Lots and lots of logistical challenges. But yeah, I get to the point on like sometimes ceramic. I'm like, ugh, I gotta reorder a bunch of ceramic. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And then I'll do a bunch of ceramic jobs and get distracted and, and then I start falling behind and then that's the worst. Because, <laughs> you know, if you use a lesser film, you have something up to compensate for it. It sucks, but that's cool. But imagine if you just don't even have the shade and they got ceramic. That's worse. All righty. Yep, about three hours on this one. Well, a little less, because we did check in and everything. And it showed up a little later. Would have been faster with the back window. Um, what do you think about Lumar versus GeoShield? Do you think GeoShield is closer to Lumar? I think it's better, but that's me. Oh, you asked to do pickup instead? Oh, that sucks that pickup wasn't available. All right.
All right, there we go. New tick? No. <laughs> no, actually, it's a. Uh, it's gonna be a YouTube video. We got some door window content. Content coming. All right. All righty. I gotta get back to some people. Busy, busy. I've spent like three days on cl the class largely ignoring <laughs> business. So I gotta get back to some people. So I am going to take off here. But uh, there's gonna be a video. Um, there's gonna be a video on the front doors for this one. We're starting to try and shoot more videos here, or we are shooting more videos. Um, so look forward to that either today or tomorrow. Um, and then we'll be live probably Saturday, I think. Today's Thursday, so probably Saturday, looks like. All righty, my dudes. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Appreciate ya. Um, actually, no supers today. Oh. <gasps> So I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Um, and I will see you Saturday, probably Saturday. Bye.